this video we're going to take a look at some more advanced uses of the range function. Supposing we want a loop that prints out the values 0, 1, 2 and 3. If you practiced, maybe by now you can already do that from memory. If not, don't worry. I remember when I was learning this stuff myself, I did have to type out four loops a whole bunch of times before I could remember how to do them. That was when I was originally learning to program and Python wasn't the first thing that I learned. So let's write 4i in range 4 colon and then under that indented let's write print i. So what's this going to do? We're creating a range which remember by default starts at 0 and it's going to iterate up to 4. So this range is going to be the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3. It's not going to include 4 at the end of the range there. And if we run this, we get 0, 1, 2, 3. Now there are more arguments that we can pass to the range function. So one thing we can do is specify the start of the range. So let's say I don't want my range to start at 0. I want it to start at 1. I could put 1 here. It has to go before the 4, so we need 1, 4. This is the start of the range, which is included in the range of numbers. This is the end of the range, which is not included in the range of numbers that we will loop over. So if I run this, we get 1, 2, 3. We can also specify a step size as the third argument to this function. If I copy this, let's have here a print that's not indented just to create a new line in the output. And I'm going to paste a copy of that. So supposing we want the numbers 4, 6, 8, 10. So what do we want to start on? We want to start on 4. And what do we want to end on? 10. But remember, the range of numbers that we produce will not include the end here. So we want to put 11. And now we don't want 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We only want 4, 6, 8, 10. So we want to skip every other number. In other words, we want a step size of 2 instead of the default step size of 1. So I can put 2 here. And then if we run this, we get 4, 6, 8, 10. Now we can call this the loop counter. It counts which iteration of the loop we're on. It tells you where you are in the loop from a certain point of view. And you can use it in whatever way you like. Sometimes you want to repeat some code though and you're not interested in the value of any loop counter. And if you want to do that, let's just copy that. What you can do is just use an underscore here instead of a variable name. So this could be whatever you want. I could write hello there. That's a strange name for a variable, but I could do that. And I could print the value of hello. And if we run this, we get 46810 as before. But supposing I'm not interested in what this value is, I can just put underscore right there. And this is just a common convention. If I could still print the underscore, that's a perfectly le legitimate variable name. But the point of using an underscore for the variable name is to indicate that you're not actually interested in the value of it. That's purely there so that this for statement actually works. So let's say I want to print hello three times. I could just write this. So for underscore in range three, print hello. I'm ignoring the value of the loop counter and I'm just printing hello three times. Try these out for yourself and it's pretty easy to make up exercises with this. So for example, can you create a loop that prints hello five, hello 10, hello 15 and hello 20 and then stops? Try it out and see what you can come up with. Hello, you've been watching a free sample from my Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to 
get you started with Python and machine learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.